Hello, and welcome to RMU Live. Today is Wednesday, March 2nd, and I'm Nathan Kingston. And I'm Michael Diemer. Here's what's happening now. With Pittsburgh continuing to support Ukraine, another one of the iconic buildings in the city has become lit with the colors of the Ukrainian flag. One of the buildings was the Golf Tower with the yellow and blue lights on the very top of the building. The lighting of the Golf Tower follows similar signs of solidarity across the city, uh, uh, country, country gee, uh, sorry about that, and rest of the world. In Pittsburgh, the city count, uh, uh, country uh, building, the Copper Building, and Fifth Avenue Place, Highmark Building, uh, were also lit in the same manner. Governor Wolf wants to remove Russian products from the Pennsylvania Fine and Wine Good Spirit stores. Wolf has sent a letter to the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board to, to, due to the, quote, unprovoked attack by Russia, end quote. The PLCB has been investigating products that may be created from Russia and other lawmakers and businesses, in the, and the state has also been calling an end to the, spelling of Rus of the selling of Russian-made alcohol in support of Ukraine. Hundreds of Pittsburgh residents take to Liberty Avenue Park in downtown Pittsburgh on Sunday, rallying support for Ukraine and the invasion of Russian forces, as the Russian forces continued. The crowd held signs together with Ukrainian flags waving in the air with the, the unity all to show how much they support Ukraine during these tough times overseas. Continuing on with the Ukraine support, Pittsburgh is one of the cities pouring out support to Ukraine. There has been a clergy from many churches across the area, local leaders uh, in the area, uh, and residents gathered at St. John uh, Evangel uh, Evangelical uh, Lutheran Church in Carnegie for a peace virgil. Uh, oh, vigil in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Many of the people there were ones from Ukrainian and Russian heritage uh, from the South Hills area. Over 200 people came together in their, uh, to, the sh to show and their solidarity with Ukraine, but more importantly, with one another. All eyes on Belarus, where talks between Ukrainian and Russian delegations took place Monday. After the meeting ended, both groups returned to their capital cities. This photo was taken inside that meeting by Belarus Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's unclear what, if anything, could come out of these talks. But according to Ukrainian spokes, uh, spokesperson, another round of negotiations could be uh, coming. Before the meeting, the Kremlin's spokesman declined the comment on Russia's goal in the high-level discussions. And though Ukraine has demanded an immediate ceasefire and withdrawal of Russian troops, the Ukrainian president has said he doesn't expect much from the meeting. And Western leaders don't have high hopes either. Now we're going to go over to Jackie Russo with the weather. Jackie, what's going on? Thanks, guys. You know, spring has sprung and winter has gone away, and with it, seasonal depression, which is what I'm most excited about. And with that, let's get into the weather today. Today's forecast is going to be a high of 52 degrees and a low of 27. Humidity is going to be at 57 percent, and there's going to be just a 10 percent chance of rain today. For hourly forecast at 3 p.m., it's going to be nice and sunny at 50 degrees. At 6 p.m., it's going to get dark, but stay clear at 44 degrees. And at 9 p.m., it is going to stay clear and stay cold at 42 degrees. For tomorrow's forecast, it is going to be a high of 33 degrees and a low of 18 degrees, so don't pack away your winter coat just yet. Humidity is going to be at 50, 49%, and there's going to be another 10% chance of rain. That is all for weather right now. How about we go back to the desk? Thank you, Jackie. Todd Hernansky worked in uh, Excel Health Westmoreland. His leaders reported his suspicious activity to the Attorney General's office last, uh, late last year. Someone saw him get into drug cabinets not assigned to him. He admitted to investigators that he took the painkillers for his own back pain. He's charged with illegal acqui uh, acquisition of controlled substances and failure to properly record dispensing the drugs. Police are looking for a person accused of robbing a giant eagle in Squirrel Hill on Monday evening. Pittsburgh police say the grocery store on Murray Avenue was robbed shortly after 5.30 p.m. A witness told the police that the suspect walked in and demanded cash from the register multiple times. The alleged robber said he had a gun, but it, the police said he didn't show it at all. Police said he ran away, and the only description he had was that he was wearing a yellow hoodie at the crime scene. 
Allegheny County 911 Dispatchers Union may stage a strike. Dispatchers are fed up months after a mandatory 12-hour shifts and have put themselves and the public at risk. There have been contract negotiations between the SEIU, representing the dispatchers, and the county are in a standstill. The dispatchers are holding a vote to authorize a one-day strike on March 12th, the day of the Pittsburgh St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day Parade. When we come back, we'll give you an update on the COVID numbers in PA. And Jack Ederline is at the Sports Desk to give us an update here on RMU Live. It's been difficult because I hadn't been able to see my grandchildren. I can't wait to get back to field trips with my school. Not having to think about putting on a mask. I really can't wait to get back to life, really. I miss all my friends. I miss taking pictures in school. An expression on someone's face when you do something nice for them. COVID-19 vaccines are available, and they're the first step to safely getting back to things we miss most. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision about COVID-19 vaccines. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 30 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. It's time to make an informed decision about COVID-19 vaccines. The dangerous new Delta variant is more than twice as contagious as the original virus and can affect anyone. Right now, nine out of 10 hospitalizations and deaths from COVID are among unvaccinated people. Getting vaccinated might save your life. And there's now an option that's fully approved by the FDA. Learn more at getvaccineanswers.org. Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for years, he's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like, if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Welcome back to RMU Live. We'll now update you guys on the COVID numbers. Today is March 2nd, so that means that is the first day of the mask mandate has been lifted here at RMU. Let's look at the COVID-19 numbers here on campus. There are currently four employees who are in isolation at this current moment in time, and nine employees and one student are in quarantine. There have been a total of 3.76 million people who have tested positive for COVID since March of 2020. However, 1,057 people in the state have tested positive yesterday, according to the New York Times a decrease of 35% from seven days ago. Going over to the college basketball side of things, a w &J student was disenrolled for holding up a disrespectful sign during a women's basketball game targeting a player on the opposing team. W.J. Dean Eva Chatterjee Sutton said the sign held up the student section was um, uh, meant to harass and hurt a Westminster player during the women's basketball game on Saturday. The sign held up said the date of the one player's father's death. Uh, Shunter J. Sutton said the be behavior had no place at W&J and the college is investigating whether others were involved. With so much going on in Europe and here at home, it's easy for headline anxiety to creep up and make us feel stressed and overwhelmed. In today's Health Minute, Mary uh, Melanie has the three tips to help to you reduce stress and worry less. Anxiety awakened. With jarring headlines of war abroad and inflation here at home, you may be feeling more anxious and overwhelmed than usual. Many people are stressed out. Many people are feeling anxious and you are not alone. The less alone we feel, the less intense those emotions can feel. Life coach and health expert Stephanie Manzor has these three tips to help you reduce that heightened anxiety and worry less. Number one, use your senses and sniff your way to serenity. You can either spritz your favorite perfume or you can use cologne, you can light a candle, you can use essential oils. Whatever you can smell that makes you feel relaxed and a little bit more at ease. Number two, when there's a lot going on that's outside of your control or too many thoughts in your mind, Manzor suggests you pause and sip on something warm like hot tea. 
Now, why hot tea? Well, when something is hot, we have to slow down. We have to calm down in order to slowly drink the hot beverage. And number three, turn to your breath. Try this simple breathing technique that will help you release stress. Breathe in for four counts, hold at the top for four counts, and slowly breathe out for another four counts. This is gonna help your nervous system get more settled and feel more relaxed. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mary Maloney. Remember that there are always going to be stressors and triggers around us. Instead of focusing on eliminating the source of the stress. Uh, Mansour says, focus on managing your emotions and mindset amidst the stress. The PIAA football championships are on the move. Despite how sweet it was for the championships to be held at Hershey Park for the past 24 years, the championship games will be for football, soccer, and field hockey, and will be moving and played at the nearby Cumberland Valley High School in Mechanicsburg, PA. The PIAA said the outdated facilities in Hershey were a factor in the decision where ch championship games will be played moving forward. Former Steelers running back Eric Wilkerson wanted, in deadly, uh, wanted a deadly stabbing. Cleveland police have issued a warrant on the 55-year-old who was charged with aggravated murder in the death of the 46-year-old Brian Weems III. According to police, the two had, an argued, had argued in the apartment on Wednesday. Wilkerson found, followed Weems into the bathroom and stabbed him multiple times before fleeing the scene. Wilkerson playing for the Steelers in 1989. And now we're going to be going over to the sports side of things. Jack, what do you have for us in the world of sports? Thanks for having me. Let's dive into what's new in the world of sports. For starters, the RMU men's and women's basketball teams got two playoff wins last night. The men's team picked up a victory at Youngstown State in their first ever Horizon League tournament win. Leading the charge for the Colonials was Khalil Spear, who had 19 points and 13 rebounds. Also, Enoch Cheeks and Cam Ferris chipped in with 12 points each. Dwayne Cahill was the leading scorer for Youngstown State with 25 points, and Tevin Allison added 17 points and 9 rebounds. In the end, the Colonials managed to pull off a close 77-73 win against the Penguins. As for the women's team, they secured a home playoff victory against Purdue Fort Wayne. Sol Castor had a double-double with 16 points and 10 rebounds for the Colonials. Mackenzie Amalia and Esther Castillo added 15 points and 14 points respectively. The leading scorers for the Mastodons were Shayla Sellers with 16 points and Ryan Ott with 13 points. Ultimately, the Colonials finished with a 70-56 win and will be advancing in the Horizon League tournament. These two playoff victories for RMU also mark the 200th career win of men's basketball coach Andy Toole and the 100th career win of women's basketball coach Charlie Biscaglia. Moving on to professional sports, MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred has announced that the league has canceled a total of 91 games after the League and Players Association uh, were not able to agree on a contract to replace the previous collective bargaining agreement, which expired on December 2nd of last year. The Players Association wants an increase in pay and proposed a base minimum salary of $775,000 with a yearly increase of $30,000. The league did not accept this request and said that the best they could do was $640,000 base minimum salary and a $10,000 yearly increase. The two parties have not been able to reach any sort of agreement after over nine straight days of negotiation. As of now, they have no further plans of negotiation. That's all from me for today. Let's take it back to the desk. Thank you, Jack. When we come back, we'll find out what's coming up next in the next in A and E. And Sam Dutch is at the A and E desk to give us an update on what's happening right after this. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe, start your plan today at ready.gov slash plan. Volver a vivir esos momentos comienza con protegerlos contra el COVID-19 y sus peligrosas variantes nuevas. Obtén la información más reciente en detidepende.org o consulta con tu pediatra o proveedor de servicios médicos. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. 
the freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Hey, boss. Okay. I said I'm fine. Hey, son. Hey, Bob. I know you can talk to me. Yeah. Welcome back to Arm You Live. And as, uh, as we said before, we got some A&E going on. This month uh, of March has many events and more to offer in the Beaver Valley in Pittsburgh area. Just this week, there are many performances that include covers of songs at hotels, and there are many high school musicals this weekend. For instance, Ambridge is doing Oklahoma, Central Valley is doing Upon a Mattress, Freedom is doing Annie, Elwood City is doing Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, and Southside is doing Cinderella. Also coming to stage AE will be Ministry and William Shatner is coming to the Homestead Music Hall. Do you love axe throwing? Well, if you do, Pittsburgh is hosting a regional axe throwing tournament. On Sunday, February 27th, axe, oh, Ace Axe Throwing in Homestead. Uh, they will be hosting the International Axe Throwing Federation Eastern Regional Tournament. During the event, 64 axe throwers will compete to win the title of Eastern Regional Champion, as well as cash prize and the opportunity to be automatically entered into round one at the International Axe Throwing Championship this April. Stand-up comedian John Mulaney will perform in Pittsburgh this year. He will perform his new touring stand-up special, From Scratch, at, at the PPG Paints Arena on September 24th of this year. This will be Mulaney's sixth special, with his most recent one being in 2019 with John Mulaney and the Sack Lunch Bunch. September's show will be the last one on his tour. There will be a new edition of Monopoly coming this fall. Monopoly Pittsburgh edition. Mayor Ed Ganey and Mr. Monopoly announced a new edition of the board game at Mount Washington last week. The board game is urging citi citizens of the city to request local landmarks into the game. If there's a place that you think that should be featured in the game, you can email TopTrumpsUSA at, at Pittsburgh at TopTrumps.com. And there's not a lot of time left. They are accepting requests until March 30th. All right, now we are going straight to the uh, our world of A&E. Sam, Dutch, what do you have for us today? Well, thanks, guys. So my most exciting thing is Big Time Rush is officially back, the boy band. I know, amazing. Um, so they officially announced their forever tour. Um, TikTok singer Dixie D'Amelio will be opening. Um, they recently came out with a new single, Not Giving You Up, and a brand new music video, and they will be coming to Pittsburgh on July 9th at the Peterson Event Center. If you're interested, get your tickets. So, when the Riddler, a sadistic serial killer, begins murdering key political figures in Gotham, Batman is forced to investigate the city's hidden corruption and question his family's involvement. In just two days, the Batman will be hitting theaters. But this is not your typical superhero movie. It is in the style of a gritty 70s crime drama. Robert Pattinson is taking over the role of Bruce Wayne, along with Zoe Kravitz as Selina Kyle, or Catwoman, and Paul Dano as the Riddler. Currently, however, in theaters, Uncharted is at the top of the charts. It was released on February 18th and features Tom Holland as the main man, Nathan Drake, as well as Mark Wahlberg as Victor Sullivan. The film is based on the video game series with the same name. Uncharted follows treasure hunters who travel across the world to uncover various historical mysteries, and in the case of the film, a 500-year-old lost fortune. This season finale of HBO Gritty Team Drama Euphoria aired Sunday, leaving fans with mixed feelings. Social media conversations revolved around one character's death, a battle royale between two other characters, and the arc of Rue, the troubled teen, played by Zendaya. Fans wondered why several plot lines had not ended differently. On Monday, The Outer Banks announced that Season 3 is now in production. Netflix announced that the series would be back for a third season in December. Set in the Outer Banks Islands off the coast of North Carolina, the show follows a group of four friends who stumble upon a treasure map and with it a bunch of alarming small town secrets. The show became an instant hit when season one premiered in April 2020 and kept its momentum going throughout season two, which hit in July 2021. 
A premiere date for Season 3 has not yet been announced. The SAG or Screen Actors Guild Awards occurred Sunday and it was a jam-packed evening. Some of the winners included Will Smith for Outstanding Performance by Male Actor in a Leading Role for his role in King Richard, Squid Game for Outstanding Action Performance by a Stunt Ensemble in a Comedy or Drama Series, and Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Supporting Role went to Ariana DeBose for her role in West Side Story. Throughout the evening, Michael Keaton dedicated Dope Sick SAG Award to his nephew who died from addiction in a moving speech. Selena Gomez ditched her heels and presented an award barefoot after tripping on the red carpet. And many store stars wore their support for Ukraine, including ribbons and a blue and yellow pocket square. After two networks and 14 different judges, American Idol is back on ABC, ringing in its 20th season. It kicked off with auditions from Austin, Los Angeles, and Nashville with returning judges Lionel Richie, Katy Perry, and Luke Bryan, along with host Ryan Seacrest. In perhaps the biggest shocker of the night, the judges were graced with the granddaughter of music royalty in the form of a 15-year-old girl whose grandma was none other than the queen of soul herself, Aretha Franklin. This season also introduced a new prize for auditioners to covet, a rare platinum ticket. Limited to only one per audition city, these tickets grant their holders a free pass through the first round of Hollywood Week. Pop punk singer Avril Lavigne is just back to relive her glory days as the princess of pop punk with new album Love Sucks. It was released last Friday, February 25th, and is her seventh studio album. It's been three years since Avril Lavigne released her confessional 2019 album. The 12-track collection features collaborations with Machine Gun Kelly on the song Boys Lie, as well as Blink-182 bassist singer Mark Hoppus on All I Wanted, and producer-songwriter Black Bear on previously released single Love It When You Hate Me. Video games, movies, and all this and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Pokemon trainers have two new adventures ahead. The Pokemon Company has announced Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, open world games in which towns blend into wilderness and wild Pokemon can be found everywhere from the skies to the seas. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet are due out late this year for the Nintendo Switch. Hello, all you beautiful people out there. My name is Jack Septiguy. The documentary How Did We Get Here looks at Sean McLaughlin, better known as Jack Septiguy, the massively popular YouTube personality, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. As a YouTuber used to knowing where the camera is, McLaughlin says his director kept him guessing. There's shots in the documentary where I'm like, I had no idea you were even there, let alone that you were recording everything. So he was he was like a ninja trying to get all of these candid shots. And I think that's why it ended up being as good as it is, because a lot of the shots that are in it are so human and so normal. How Did We Get Here premieres Monday on the live stream platform Moment House, with releases on other digital and VOD platforms to follow. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That's all for a &E. Let's send it back to the desk. Thank you, Sam. And then back when we come back on RMU Live, we'll talk about the weather from Jackie Rusta. Every day, every day, millions of people are connecting. And even though we're overcoming obstacles, watching each other's backs, and banding together, we should still make an effort. We should still make an effort to get to know each other on a deeper level. Father, cosplayer, mentor, actor. It's time we take a step forward. It's time we take a step forward. Come together. And discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. <laughs> yeah! Sam, Elmo! Oh, hey, Julia. Are you ready to play band with us? I'm going to play my clarinet. And Elmo's going to play his drum. Drum loud. Oh, well, you know what to do, Julia. Hi, Julia knows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With Julia's autism, loud sounds can be too much. But she still loves to make music. <laughs> Play band. Early screening for autism can make a lifetime of difference. Find out more at screenforautism.org. <sighs> yeah! If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. You got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. 
Appreciate you. Yeah. Welcome back to Arm You Live. As we said before, we're going to toss it over to weather. Jackie, what do you have for us? Thanks, guys. Let's take another look at what we have for this week. To, for today, our forecast is going to be a high of 52 degrees and a low of 27. Humidity is going to be at 57%, and there's going to be just a 10% chance of rain today. For tomorrow's forecast, it's going to be a high of 33 degrees and a low of 18. Humidity is going to be at 50%, and there's going to be a 10% chance of rain. For our weekly forecast, Friday is going to be sunny and nice with a high of 42 degrees and a low of just 29. Saturday is going to be our best day of the week with nice warm weather, so make sure you definitely get outside at a high of 62 degrees and a low of 50. Sunday is going to be about the opposite of Saturday with a high of 63 degrees and a low of 50, but with a lot of rain. And Monday, same thing with the rain at a high of 54 degrees and a low of 34. And Tuesday is going to be a lot better with lots more sun and a little bit of clouds at a high of 46 degrees and a low of 31 degrees. That is all for weather this week. I hope you have a great week and a great spring break. We'll see you next time at RMU Live. Thank you, Jackie. And uh, Nate, I don't know about you, but uh, I, li I like sports, right? And uh, I think if we want to update the public on RMU Sports, I think a great way to do that is on uh, colonialsportsnetwork.com. I just want to give that a little plug. What, a little plug. what about you? Uh, well, personally, I think if you're really into uh, uh, reading and writing stories and also being on some of these TV shows, you should definitely join Century Media because mm -hmm. the writers, they got a lot over there for you. That's another selfless plug there as yeah, well. I know, right? <laughs> um, moving on to some sports stuff. Um, Michael, what do you think about um, RU's basketball teams? I mean, they were obviously the the women's team was the eight seed. They hosted the playoff game last night. I was there. It was very, it was very exciting for them to win. But the men, they were the 10 seed over over Youngstown State, they, they beat them in a pretty decisive manner. They were up by 20 with like, late in the second half, so I thought that was really really exciting to see. They move on to the next round. They play Cleveland State tomorrow. That'll be, that'll be really exciting. And along with CSN, CSN will actually be there at attendance in Cleveland, so I think that will be another shameless plug there. But, uh, yeah, it's really exciting to see the Colonial teams, maybe not, maybe not what they thought this year, but two wins in the postseason so far in, in March. At, I think that's really exciting to see. Oh yeah, and uh, I know over on the ice side of things, the uh, the Penguins they uh, they released a new uniform, some throwback classics. Yeah, p yeah, those powder blue unis are absolutely they're clean in my opinion. I mean, I was I, I'm a Caps fan, so I saw I saw them in the winter I saw them in the Winter Classic in 2008. I mean, like it was a it, those are really uh, clean to see. I mean, I'm glad the Penguins are bringing those back. I think the fans really wanted to see them again. Oh yeah, I definitely do think they wanted to see the blue unis again. Um, now uh, for spring break, uh, Michael, what are you doing? So I'm going home, like I said, like I said I'm, I'm from DC, so I think it's really nice and refreshing to, to go back home. I haven't been there in a while. Good to see family and friends all over again. And uh, yeah, spring break is really exciting to me. Only three more days left. Three more days. Now me personally, I'm also just going home. Mm -hmm. I know, pretty boring, but hey, I know uh, I know we uh, have a lot of things going on, and a lot of people also going to many tropical places. Um, now, um, from, uh, I know for um, many people in the studio, I know Jackie, she's going over to a beach, I believe, which is pretty cool. Jackie, you name drop her over there. Uh, and um, I know um, uh, the Steelers, there was news uh, there, talks about getting a new GM yeah, coming in. Yeah, Kevin Colbert was stepping down. Louis Riddick, I mean, he was being interviewed for the job, so... Louis Riddick, we've seen him on TV on ESPN a lot, so I don't know. It should be should be a good fit for them. Kevin Gobert, I don't I don't know what people think about him, but out the door now, putting a new era in. Ben Roethlisberger is out, so yep. Yeah. Uh, um, anyways, Nate, it was great to have you on with me. Yes, yes, you as well, Michael. And My also, Army, de Army live debut. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, yeah, yeah. And I also big thanks over to uh, Jack Enterline and Sam Dutch over on Sports and A and E, and also Jackie Rost in the weather. All the people uh, upstairs, all the people on the floor. I want to give a good shout out to them. So yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna wrap things up here. Thanks for watching RMU Live. We'll see you in two weeks.